Hey guys, welcome back. So if you watched my part one of the woods to food plot conversion, uh, I told you I was gonna take you through the whole process from start to finish. I have a lot of that fallen dead timber cleared out in the front plot and I've cleared out all the brush in the back plot. So the next step for me is to put some of my food plot screening in. I'm using Egyptian wheat to screen these food plots because th this is a small property. So I need to screen it from the residents and some of the livestock that are sharing this property. So behind me here, I went through and I sprayed about an eight to 10 foot wide strip. It's gonna go along the food plot and put a barrier between the house, the animals, and where that food plot is and where these travel corridors are. In the front of the property, I came through and I sprayed another six to eight foot wide strip along the road. I need to screen that food plot from the roadway. I also need to screen that food plot on the north side from the house. So before you bring up adding a food plot near the road and increasing that deer activity crossing that street, the deer are already using that area. The ag fields are across the street. So the deer are moving from bedding and they're going across that road. So I'm just adding this food plot to try and slow them down in their natural travel that they're already doing. So I wanted to spend a little more time at the front of the property, allowing a few more shots during hunting season. So I used glyphosate to spray that eight to 10 foot wide strip where I'm gonna plant the Egyptian wheat. Now, this used to be a clover food plot. Egyptian wheat loves a nitrogen rich soil. Clover naturally puts nitrogen into the soil. So this soil should be prime, ready for some Egyptian wheat. So I used the ranger just to come in, disturb that soil a little bit before I put the seed down. And then I use the ranger again, just to drive over that seed and pack it down into the ground before the rain comes. Now in the front of the property, it was just some native grasses. So I sprayed that same strip up front, but I'm gonna leave that dead grass there and use the side-by-side -side to pack that seed down into the soil and leave that dead grass covering the seed. In the wooded part in the front, I went through, I raked out all the loose brush, exposed some of that soil. I went in, sprayed some of the weeds in there, and then put down that seed and lightly raked it in just to give it a little bit of cover on that soil. We have good rainfall coming in the next couple days, so it's the perfect time to get the seed in the ground. So that front food plot is mainly gonna be a fall plot. I'm not gonna plant anything there in the spring, but I still need to plant that plot screen so it is time to mature before hunting season. Um, it can get up to eight to 10 feet tall. If you plant a little later, you're probably gonna get more five to seven feet tall. But I'm planting it here in mid-April, so I'll probably get that max height out of it, which you don't necessarily need, need the max height because you only need to block the deer's vision. So if you get five to seven feet, it's gonna be plenty for you. But I'm planting it a little early. I'm gonna let it get established and hopefully get that eight to 10 foot height. Make sure you guys subscribe, because in about a month, I'll give you guys a follow-up video on this, let you know how the seed's coming in and how I'm liking it. As far as the woods to food plot conversion, the next step is gonna be to plant that clover plot in the rear of this property. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a follow-up video in about a week or two. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. As always, make sure to contact us for the habitat solutions on your whitetail property. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment on this video.